This will be what to look for, what to check, before you buy a 2003 Lincoln Town Car. We'll go ahead and start under the hood with the mighty 4.6 liter modular V8 from Ford. And this is under the hood of the mighty 4.6 modular V8 in our Lincoln Town Car. At first glance, everything looks to be pretty pretty clean. That's all cleaned up. You can tell it's the original alternator. It's still got the same patina as the timing cover and the rest of the engine. Uh, in order to get this cover off, you would use your one quarter inch drive from a socket, and that'll take that beauty cover off, acoustic cover, whatever you want to call it. We'll just leave that on for now. We're just going to do a couple of things you want to check before you buy one over. And the belt looks to be in good shape until it is the original one's aged. It's like got little, you know, a little bit of wear in there. It's not really cracked per se, but you can tell, you know, she's old. All right, what we want to make sure most of is we don't have any coolant leaks because I'm sure the Mustangs and the Crown Vicks, if they have this problem, there's no reason why these vehicles wouldn't either. And that is the uh, um, intake manifold is plastic. And sometimes they're known for cracking right around there by that thermostat housing. So what we're just going to do is the hoses seem to be kind of stiff, right? Not hard. They're still semi-flexible, but mostly we're going to do our pressure test on here. Make sure this thing can hold pressure. If we don't see any coolant gushing out, then we know that this thing is all good to go. We move on to our next test, which will be uh, starting up and checking the battery. And then we'll do our OBD test on all the modules and everything inside the car. Okay, so we've got our adapter hooked up. That's going to be the black one, number 22 in our kit, by the way, for this Lincoln. Probably going to be the same for Mustangs and Crown Vicks. Anything else with this Ford Modular V8 has the same type of expansion tank. And we are holding pressure constant at 13. I don't see any leaks. I don't hear any hissing or leaks. So this guy passes the pressure test. Ideally, when you do this, you want to do this for like some length of time and see if it ever drops down, but... If you have any leaks, you're really going to know right away. It's going to not hold pressure. You're going to see coolant leaks immediately. And or you're going to hear hissing. We don't have any of that, so we can let the pressure out. And we'll move on and we'll test our battery, which looks pretty new. 9 of 19 is what that says. So we'll just hook our battery tester up to it and fire her up and see uh, what state our battery is in. Okay, we already got the top down Auto Battery 101 hooked up. Boom, boom. So let's go ahead. It says we got 12.08 uh, volts. English. It's in the vehicle. Before charging, the vehicle was shipped here on a big truck. It's regular flooded. Cold cranking amps, and that's 750 on this dude. Okay. Test it. State of health 100%. State of charge is 15%, says so. It's actually putting out 810 amps, rated for 750, but it does need a recharge. Cranking test, start the engine. I. Point two seconds, cranking down to ten point two four volts. Says that's normal. We'll do a charging test where we rev it up. Loaded testing right now, and then it's going to have me rev up the engine. So we'll go do that. That should be enough. Charging normal, ripple and loaded are good. All right, so that's it, guys. Good on the battery. Now let's do some uh, diagnostics on everything. Make sure uh, all our systems are good to go. 
Okay, so in the old four Lincoln Town car, we got our OBD port right up there. And we are going to use the uh, BMW scanner on this guy, as opposed to that Autel. Mostly just because we don't have any actual warning lights on. So we're just checking modules to see if they're ready for any emissions tests. Because in Missouri, if you live in St. Louis or near it, apparently only those vehicles pollute, so only those vehicles need uh, emissions testing. Yes, yeah, true story. So, let's do OBD2. Now, since we all like transparency here, full disclosure, this thing has already been to the shop to be emissions tested, but I believe it was deemed not ready. So, MIL status is off. There are zero diagnostic trouble codes. There are seven completes, but there is one incomplete. But that's all you need in order to pass. If it's uh, 2001 and newer, you can have one not ready. So maybe one tripped when he was on his way home or something. I don't know. So let's see what's not ready. Uh, let's go this since they were cleared. Okay, so everything's okay there. There's no heated catalyst monitor. Nice. So the EVAP system is what is incomplete. Secondary air system. Not applicable. Okay, so that's it then. All right, so the only thing not ready is the EVAP system. Um, of course, if there were things bad, though, <laughs> you could read the codes. We can still do data stream on this. Do the O2 sensor test. I'm not sure if this has dual exhaust on it or not. But we can go data stream just to see uh, yeah, how it all. Engine coolant temperature is 140. Probably sounds about right. It's been running for a few minutes now. Okay, so our short-term fuel trim's looking good. It's bounced between negative two, zero. So it's not really having to compensate much. Long-term's about the same. Take manifold pressure, engine RPM. So this thing does, does this thing have a MAP sensor? I don't know, because it has a manifold absolute pressure sensor. RPMs do increase. Take air temperature is 53 degrees. I don't know if this car tells me what the outside temperature is. I'm sure it does somewhere. Probably have to go through a menu to find it. See if the throttle position works. Yep. Okay, so here we can monitor oxygen sensors. And what you want to see is that the voltage is changing and moving. It means they're not dead, so they are working. Okay. Okay, so after doing a bunch of driving, we still have the one not ready. I'm going to assume then. Incomplete EVAP system. Oh well. Maybe the gas cap's bad, not letting it complete or something. It's the only thing I can think of. Of. All right, so when it's eh, maybe one third of the way up, you're running about 167 degrees Fahrenheit for reference.
one thing you want to look at also when you're testing, in addition to just looking at the voltage, you do also want to kind of see that your first bank is the going up and down one, the red one, bank one, sensor one. The black line is bank one, sensor two, which should be somewhat more consistent. Which it is. See, it's generally 0.2 in some change going up and down, but generally what you want to see is how your first one's making adjustments up and down, up and down, up and down. And then the second sensor, it's monitoring, you know, it's mostly straight. But as you see, it's very consistent. It's not up and down all over the place. So that indicates that your catalytic converters are working and for sure your oxygen sensors are working. See, this is okay to look at, but sometimes you want a visual, a graphical visual representation of what all these numbers are doing, then you want to go to the graph just to peep them out. Make sure you when you're looking at oxygen sensor voltage that they're actually doing something. Primarily bank one sensor one is in fact checking metered air, it's moving up and down making adjustments and that the downstream sensor is measuring somewhat consistent oxygen. And of course, this engine, though warm, isn't super hot, so that's why we're getting a little bit of bank one sensor two fluctuation. Probably be a little more consistent there uh, if the engine had been run quite hard and was quite warm. But bottom line is that's kind of what you want to see. Bank one sensor one all over the place. Bank one sensor two, somewhat more consistent. And that will be the same with bank two sensor one and bank two sensor two. Upstream, sporadic, and then downstream, more consistent. Fuel rail positive relative to manifold vacuum. Sweet. All right, well, that's everything on this, so let's go ahead and get her on level ground, and then we'll just check the uh, transmission fluid level, and then I'd say you'd be done uh, just doing all the basic stuff to make sure your beast is good to go before you take off and buy it. Okay, so second works, moves forward, brakes work really well. First, moves forward right when you let off the... It's neutral, giving it gas, not moving anywhere, it's only rolling forward, all right, so reverse, let your foot off the brake, and she goes backwards, works pretty good, all right, let's go check our uh, fluid level. And there's our transmission fluid dipstick, I didn't bring the tripod out, so I have to, that's why I have to keep cutting between me doing things here, because I can't just prop you up and let you look at it, but... We're going to pull that out and check the fluid level and the condition of it. Alright, and if you guys can see, it is within spec. It's just above that notch there. Don't, F, don't add if in whatever the hell that says. Crosshatch. Alright, so maybe when it heats up more it'll go up more, but it is within the acceptable range, I would say, at temperature. And uh, let's use Mercon 5 only. Okay, good to know. All right, so it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't look bad. It looks pretty normal. Not excessively worn or nothing. So it's a transmission fluid level is good. Put her back in. This is the oil level. So though it does look clean, I think I can ignore the message about change engine oil soon. Uh, you're about two quarts low in this car, which means, eh. Well, you're at least one quart low. I mean, it depends on which side you flip it. You're right at the notch. 
So it could be acceptable, could not be. So I think this thing does need some oil for sure. But at that point, you might as well change it then. If you're going to have to add at least one quart or more, might as well change it. But that's after it's parked on level ground and after that engine's been running. I just shut it off. So, all right. Uh, moving on to the next. Okay, now we got her topped off with that extra quart of oil, so we're all good on that. Oh, found a fuse. Must have needed a fuse. Ugh. Well, let me get the light on under here. Okay, there we go. And you just want to, of course, check things like your bushings. There's the catalytic converter, the oxygen sensor. I guess that's, uh, yeah, that's your oxygen sensor, your air fuel meter is the one upstream of the cat, but. E-brake cable. I mean, it's really, the exhaust is a little surface rust on it, but, I mean, it looks pretty dry underneath. I don't see any leaks. Nothing that would indicate this thing's in bad shape overall. I mean, really, all this is is just a little surface rust. Nothing. It does have duels. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and check the suspension. The tread looks pretty good. We can see our wear indicators way down there. Tread's way up here. Let's check your air pressure. And suspension. We do have... Stabilizer bar, end links, boots look to be in good order. I don't see any leaking from the strut. Lower ball joint boot is in good condition. And I can't really see the... I can kind of see the upper ball joint there. And that boot looks intact, so we are good there. I don't know. And there's a lot of rim here, preventing me from getting a good look at the brakes, but you would want to pull your wheel off, of course, and check those. Now, I'm not going to do it. This thing's already passed a safety inspection, so the brakes are in good condition, as was the rest of the suspension. But I just wanted to show you that's what you would check for if you're buying one of these, in addition to all the other things, the oil level, the make sure the cooling system, and all that stuff is good. So, I mean, that's really about it, guys. That's the only thing you really need to check, I mean, if you're buying one of these things. But that's not just this. That's any car, you know. Check to make sure you don't have rust, holes in your exhaust. Your tread's good, your brakes are good, your suspension's good, the radiator is good. It's not leaking, the battery's good. You know, that's the stuff you want to check on one of these if you're buying one. So, I guess I'll catch you in the next video I'm doing a review of this thing, showing you what's doing with it. I guess the only other thing I could think to maybe check is your steering shaft right here. Because these are exposed to the elements, so you just want to make sure that you don't have a bunch of... You know, these are a little surface rusty, but not too bad. Probably wouldn't hurt to spray them down a little every so often, white lithium grease or something, just to make sure that those are in good shape. That'd be the only other thing I can think to really check if you're buying one of these things. Just make sure that you don't have any leaks under it in the radiator. Oil's not leaking. Sounds good. Battery is good. Life. The cooling system holds pressure. You have plenty of transmission fluid. You have plenty of oil. Maybe your air filter. Make sure that that's all good. Looks good from the top over here. Let me set you down. Yeah, this is good. Those pleats are clean. There's not a bunch of debris and everything down in there from squirrels or freaking sucking up stuff into the intake so and that's it guys that's 
things you just need to look for if you're going to buy one of these things. Uh, any Panther platform, your Mercury Grand Marquis Marauders or Ford Crown Vicks. Um, and a lot of this can be applied to any other car too. So, all right, I'm going to catch you guys next video when we're doing the whole review of this thing. Thanks for watching. Peace.